So, third verse we had seen. Yogo Yoga Vidam Neta Pradhana Purusheshwara Narasimha Vapushriman. Shriman we had seen. Next is Keshavaha. Keshavaha is the next name. Now, Keshavaha, now the screen that I am. Oh, it's not clear. The screen that I am sharing now, that is for. Uh, it is the. It is from the Shankara Bhashya. So, just for your reference, in case you need, you can go through it. I will be sharing it later too. So, Keshavaha. So, the definition is Abhirupaha Keshaha Yasyasaha. You can see on your screen. So, the literal meaning as per Shankara Bhashya is one who has beautiful hair. That is why Kesha or Kes we say that means literally it means one who has good hair. So, the Lord also is referred to by this name saying that Keshavaha. We call very common name Kesha or Keshavaha. We name boys also with this name. Reason being one who has beautiful hair. So, this is the most common meaning. But apart from this, there are two more definitions. If you say there was a demon named Keshi who was killed by the Lord, so he is named Keshavaha. Then, Kascha Ascha I Shascha. If you see the second definition, Trimurtayaha Keshavaha, Te Yad Vashate Vartante Saha Keshavaha. One in whom Ka Vishnu, Ka Brahma, A Vishnu, Isha, Shiva. One in which Trimurtai, all the three reside, they are also Keshava. So, like this, there can be many, many definitions. But the most common meaning that we know is one who has beautiful hair arrangements. For this, there is a very beautiful story. Look at the story. <clears throat> so, once there was a king in South India, he was called as Sharabhoji. So, this uh, king, and he used to live in the place Tirukkannapuram, Tirukkannapuram, Tamil Nadu. Uh, so, there uh, he used to live. So, mainly he was a Pallava, Chola kings, you can, uh, of those times, you can imagine, because they used to rule South India in those times. So, if you see most of the South Indian temples today, or the temples that are there in South India, you all the big architecture, you go to Madurai, Srirangam and so on, the most of the contributions are done by these Pallava and Chola kings. And of course, little... Uh, by the Vijayanagara kings. So, uh, you see a lot of development or they have done a lot of contribution to this temple for developing these temples. So, like this, uh, this particular king also called Sharabhoji, he used to donate a lot of jewels. He used to give a lot of jewels to this Tirukarnapuram temple for the Lord. So, uh, so therefore the Lord, now usually if you go to any Vishnu temple, Vishnu always likes to dress up himself, right? Alankara Priya Vishnu. So, he will wear good clothes, he will wear jewels. Even if you look at a photo of Krishna or Vishnu, you can see he is always decked up to down. Whereas in the case of Shiva, it is not so. So, Vishnu is the god who likes to dress up. Always he is decked properly. So, this uh, king also used to give a lot in donation. And uh, everything was going on good. So, the priest who was uh, working, who was uh, doing all the puja and worship at the king in the temple, he used to... Like now, every day he used to get these jewels. Maybe not every day, occasionally. So what he used to do is, he used to take some jewels for his wife. So he used to take that, uh, because being a priest, he could not afford to buy jewels. But then, no woman, all women as we know, they are happy if you give them jewels. So then, the king used to anyway donate a lot. So he said that I will put it to the Lord also. And then later, after putting it, I will take it for my wife. So then, uh, she, he used to take it away. So now one day the king found out, king through his sources also, he came to know about this. But then he had just heard it. So he had no proof that this was being done by the archaka, by the priest. So he set out on a mission that, okay, I have to fi find out what is happening. I am donating so many jewels and ornaments and everything is just going away like this. This is not accepted. I am not giving it to the priest for his personal use to give it to his wife. I am offering it to the Lord. So he and his minister, what they did is, uh, they decided that we'll go to the temple and we'll check. So the priest gets this news, he tells, oh, the king is now coming, he will ask me. So what he does is, he brings all the jewels that he had given to his wife, he bought it back again. Told his wife, okay, no, today the king is coming, so I'll take everything back, I'll offer it to the Lord only, so that there is no question of doubt or so. So she also agrees. He brings back all the jewels and he offers it, he puts it on the Lord only. So the king and his minister, they come they are surprised to see that okay all the jewels everything is there the priest also removes all the jewels from the lord and he shows it to the king properly and while he was doing so uh, in the jewels he saw that there was a long strand of hair 
hair. So now the king and the minister they knew that oh this person is really offering it to a lady. That is why we can find. <coughs> that is why we can find hair here. So immediately they now they had disguised themselves and come. They didn't come as a king and minister directly. They had put on a disguise so that the priest does not uh, could he could not find out. But then of course he also had got the news that the king is coming. Immediately they removed their disguise and told that I am the king and he is my minister. Uh, why did you cheat us like this? That uh, you are saying that you have offered it to the Lord only. We can see a lady is hairy. The Lord does not have hair, right? So then now the priest is afraid. He does not know what to do. But he prays to the Lord and he tells uh, the king that no, no, from the hair. Now it's called a shauri or a shauri, chauri, whatever you call it. For Lord Vishnu or especially for goddesses, we keep the hair that is there as an ornament. So it says that no, this hair has fallen from the Lord's hair only. Lord Balaji and so on, they are known for their hair, right? So for Lord Venkatesha, Lord Vishnu also does the same thing. He does not believe. The king says, what nonsense, something you are talking, you are trying to hide your sin. Now the priest was doing the same thing, but still he prayed to the Lord and he said so. So the king said, okay, if it is so, you, uh, you have to prove this. When can I see the uh, hair of the Lord? Now when we, now usually when you are seeing a lord, we, we see the lord from the front side, right? You cannot see the back side. So then he says, I want to see, you know, if the hair is there, it should be on the back side of the head. I have to see where is the hair. Only then I can uh, declare that, okay, this hair has fallen from there. So then uh, the priest said that on the evening of Amavasya, you can come when there is a seva is being done. The lord is taken out on procession. So at that time, you can see even the back side of the head of the hair and see whether the lord really has got hair also. So then he agrees. And then on Amavasya day, <coughs> the Lord is taken out on a procession. So at that time, to the king's surprise, the Lord really had hair. Hair is here kept the shauri, that is a shauri or fake hair, whatever we call it. And that is why from that day onwards, the Lord himself on this temple of Tirukannapuram, the Lord himself is named as Chauri Raja Pirmal. Chauri Raja Pirmal or the Lord called Chauri Raja, meaning the one who has adorned hair. King and his minister were surprised and surprised, and they really believed that oh, this hair has been fallen by the uh, from the king from the Lord's head only. So this was the <coughs> reference, and they finally believe and they uh, ask for forgiveness to the priest also. So now, here if you see, the priest was actually wrong because he had given the jewels to his wife, and he did not. Uh, he actually lied to everyone saying that the Lord only has adorned it. But then why did the Lord support him in this endeavor? Is because he had shown a lot of bhakti and devotion and though his intention was wrong, he stealed the Lord's uh, jewels that were given to him by the king. But still at the right time when it was needed, he brought it back and the Lord himself, he tried to save his devotee at this time. The reason being the priest was very, very devoted. So he had done 10 things good, one mistake he had committed. So the first time the Lord said that no, I will forgive you because you have done so many good things to me. His motive was not wrong because he could not uh, afford a lot and give to his wife. That is the reason he took the jewels. So therefore here Lord shows Kshama or forgiveness that is shown to his devotee. And at the right time he will surely consider the devotion that we do. Of course he did a mistake, he should be punished for that. But even the Lord also here does not punish his devotees on the first go. So therefore, and he has shown some kshama. And he knew that if once this person is taught a lesson or once this person, uh, like in the case of the priest, the king found out, so then the next time surely he will not do that. So this is a belief that the Lord had on his devotee because the priest was not a bad man. But of course, he because he could not afford something, he had the feeling to give it to his wife. So here the quality of Kshama is learned from this story that is there that even Lord also has qualities. He is also showing the quality of forgiveness and why should we humans not learn it? So even when someone commits a small mistake, like it can be 10 good things they do to us, one small thing they do and we should not hold that grudge against them. Human beings, we have the quality of looking at the bad things of people. That's the reason it is said that we do 10 things good. One thing you do bad, people remember the bad thing. Therefore, always do good things. It is heard, right? 
but then why not overlook the bad thing and look more at the good things so this nama or this story mainly talks about that significance of the name keshavaha one having beautiful hair so this story or this nama reveals and talks more about the beauty of the hair so therefore of the lord therefore the name is keshavaya namaha so even if we chant this nama keshavaya namaha just as the lord saved the priest from all kinds of dangers lord also will save us from all kinds of dangers so now a small learning out of this is that does it mean that i will commit mistakes always and then lord shows forgiveness that is not the meaning so in the case of the priest he was his intention was not wrong his intention was good he just wanted to make his wife happy so that is a reason he had done so and he never repeated this mistake again so therefore all of us also unknowingly or once if we commit a mistake without knowing the consequences behind it surely the lord and people all around also or we also should forgive people to be the next time when things are too serious you can think about some punishment so this is a story behind the keshavaha this now did everyone understand yes okay next okay. योगो योग विदानेता प्रधान पुरुषेश्वर नारसिंह वुष्टिमा केशव पुषोत्तम लास्ट नेम ऑफ द थर्ड वर्ड्स पुरुषोत्तम पुषाण उत्तम पुषोत्तम राम मर्यादा पुषोत्तम पुष ऑलफस आर पुष मैन कैंड पुषाण उत्तम पुषोत्तम अमंग मेन वन हू इज द बेस्ट दट इज पुषोत्तम और पुषेभ्य उत्तम दट इज ऑलो दैट So here again you have a reference to the Gita. Yasmat Kshramati Toham Kshrada Pi Purushottama Yoga Ha Chapter Fifteen, wherein Lord Krishna talks about his form, Purusha, that form. So Purushottama Ha, what is the name of this? <coughs> again, there is a story behind this. Now, usually we know that Garuda has an enmity with snakes, right? so usually or birds like eagles vultures they always have an enmity with snakes or reptiles reason being that is their food as per uh, the food cycle if you see birds usually like vultures and eagles they come and they attack these snakes so there was a snake called sumukha sumukha and uh, garuda both of them were having a fight so what happened is that sumukha he ran and in heaven the lord sits Lord is known by the name of Upendra, Upendra, and he sits there. He sits on a throne. So Mukha went on the Lord. When Lord Vishnu was there, he went to the Lord's throne. Under the Lord's throne, in, near the feet of the Lord, he just circled himself. How a snake tweaks itself. So the same thing, even so Mukha, the snake also did. Garuda was coming from behind. Garuda was actually chasing so Mukha. So then he saw that now this so Mukha snake has very smartly gone. Under the feet of Vishnu, under the feet of Upendra, what should I do now? So then, Lord Vishnu tells, "Now you should not attack the snake any more because he has attained my feet." Garuda says, "That is all not law. There is no logic behind all this. He is my enemy. You don't come in the middle." That's what Garuda tells Vishnu. Vishnu tells, "No, that all I don't know. He might be your enemy. That's your personal fight that you have. One who attains, one who surrenders, one who takes sharanagati. However, he is the minute he comes and attains my feet." He might he might be an evil man. He might be a good man. He might be a robber. He might be your enemy. There is no concern on that. Once a person falls at my feet, I will give him moksha. I will take care of him. There should be no attack on him. Garuda agrees. Garuda does not talk anything more. But then he had that anger. So next question he asks Vishnu is that you are being so proud of yourself. You say someone attains my feet, I'll give him moksha. I am the one who carries you on your back. What about that? So I should be greater, right? And you are blessing this person, Sumukha. Now, Vishnu saw that Garuda has become a bit proud. So Vishnu tells him that, okay, you carry me, but then I am the one who has given you the strength, right, to carry. Now, for example, all of us also, if today we are doing so and so thing, for example, now if I am telling you the Vishnu Sasanama, I cannot boast about saying that I am talking about the stories of Lord Vishnu. It is only with His grace. and all the knowledge that a few other people have told or books they have written with that maybe little efforts i could put in and that's why i'm just telling you the same thing i've not made something new right so here also with this in the case of garuda also garuda has not invented that okay i with, with only with my powers i'm going to carry him with the god's grace god's blessings god only has enabled him to carry him on his back 
this Garuda forgets at this time because he has become very proud. He had that anger on Sumukha. So then the Garuda boasts about, I am the one who ca- is carrying you on your world and ultimately first name of Vishnu Sasanama, Vishwam Vishnu, first two names, meaning that the whole world is in you. You are inside the whole world. So literally it means that I am carrying the whole world on my back and you are talking up to me like this. This is what Garuda tells Vishnu. Vishnu tells, don't be proud. I am the one who have given you the strength. right? I am give- the one to everyone. Some of the other power is given. That is why all of us, we have our own strengths and weaknesses. Someone will be good at something. Same one will be bad at something. Similarly to you also, I have given you something. So don't be proud of that. Garuda does not listen. Vishnu tells, I have to teach. Now here, we cannot say that Garuda is wrong. What he told was correct. But then in his pride, he was getting deviated. So that is why Vishnu had to teach him a lesson. So what he did is he called Vishnu, he called Garuda nearby and he said that, come here, I'll show you something. With his left hand, he just touches the shoulder of Garuda. The Lord with his left hand touches the shoulder of Garuda. Garuda could not bear the weight of the Lord. He falls down. Garuda is surprised. He said, what happened to you suddenly? Every day I'm carrying you. Today I cannot bear even the weight of your left hand. Vishnu says, that's what. You cannot carry the weight of mine at all. But... Because I am giving you the strength today. Because I have given you the strength to carry me. That is the reason why you were doing that. And the strength has been removed due to your pride. And due to your anger now. You cannot even carry a small, my left hand also on you. Therefore, don't be proud of anything. That's what he tries to teach. It. And this incident that is there, you go to a temple in Trichy. I think it's called Tiruvalare temple. There, you can actually find this. Where the Garbha Mocha, Garbha Mocha of Garbha Mochanam, you call it Garbha, Garbha Mochanam. Meaning the pride of Garuda is removed by Lord Vishnu. We can actually see the idol of Lord Vishnu touching the shoulder of Garuda with his left hand. That is Garbha Mochanam, Garbha Mochanam. Which so, place? Uh, in Trichy, Tiruvallarai, Tiruvallarai temple, Trichy, Trichy district, Tiruchirapalli district, South India, Tamil Nadu. So here out of this again, now... This is just a story that is there. How it is again relatable to us is that many times it happens <coughs> we become too proud and we don't realize that because of someone else's efforts or because of something else today I am in a situation. So, But when we are successful nobody remembers that. right? If today I am successful and happy we don't remember that. No, it is all because of my own efforts. We don't remember the efforts put in by those people who are behind our success. It might be our teachers, it might be our parents, it might be friends, it might be anyone around. But we don't remember. Or how many times do we actually go and tell them, okay, thanks, because of you I am today doing like this, because of your timely help today I am in a good situation. We don't do that. At the times of help, times of need, when someone helps us, we accept that happily, we take that. But how many times do we actually go appreciate, how many times do we express our gratitude, how many times do we actually go and tell thanks, we don't do that easily, right, so the same thing here has been told by, so this incident, what Vishnu tries to show to the entire world is that, at times, it's not always that only you are great, it's because of other people also, and to go and appreciate that, not only show our own pride and anger, that is very, very important, so through this story, it is revealed, so, now, Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi, one more doubt. Uh, hmm. So this, uh, that is in the story that Sumukhaya Namaha and that is no, Veda. No, 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 no. Purusho, na, name is right? Purushottama. Sumukha is different. Ha. The Sumukhaya ah. Namaha is different. That comes in ah. for Ganesha, Ganesha Puja. Ah. That ah. is different. That is Sumukha, second Kha. This is Sumukha. Okay. The snake is different. So here the Nama is Purushottama. So now why Purushottama? This is a story behind this Nama. But why the name Purushottama? Purushottama literally means one who is great. right? Purushana Muttamaha Purushottama. So the Lord is literally great here. That's what has been shown. There is nothing beyond the Lord. So now how the... You can say for this it is divided into four parts. One is Purushaha. All of us we are Purushaha, mankind. It's not that we are bad. We are also good. We have both good and bad qualities in us. right? Purushaha we live on the earth. Next is amongst us, among mankind, Purushot, S-H-O-T, Purushot. These are the second category or you can say the next level of people who have good qualities more in them. Maybe you can consider all of you. 
good and bad qualities are there in everyone we are born with both but all of you you are listening to the vishnu sasanama you are putting in a lot of efforts to do some good things so you are purushot meaning good qualities are more in you that doesn't mean that we don't have evil qualities we have anger and so on that is there but good is more so purushot third category of people is purushottara purushottara are people like garuda pralada dhruva and so on they are all devotees of vishnu always having good qualities they stay in heaven only they are given a high level place also they stay in heaven they are not gods you can say people who are very close to the lord devotees of lord and so on or maybe they have seen lord they spend time with the lord they are purushottara last ultimate stage purushottama that is the lord himself there is nothing beyond there is nothing more good than that that is the ultimate that is there so there are four degrees of comparison those who know little bit of sanskrit grammar you can know tara tama tara and tama uttara ha uttama it is like a superlative degree comparative and superlative degree in sanskrit is used with these suffixes tara ha tama ha same is used here first is purusha ha all creatures are born with both good and bad qualities they live on earth second is purushot people like all of you who are having good qualities a bit more than bad qualities we do have bad qualities evil qualities we also live on earth but the amount of good qualities is more third category purushottara devotees of the lord like dhruva prahlada garuda and so on who are always around the lord they are not lord themselves but they are always around god and the last ultimate level is purushottamaha purushottamaha means the greatest of great good the most good like there is nothing beyond that we cannot remove even one bad quality there everything is just good 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 only sattva quality everywhere that is the lord himself purushottama so the nama here is if we chant the name purushottamaya namaha it's nothing beyond the lord that's how the lord tries to teach garuda that i am the one who is carrying everything right so here one thing we have to note that this doesn't mean that the lord is proud about himself someone will have a doubt he tries to remove the pride of garuda but at the same time he says i am great so does that mean that the lord is showing his pride no but what is the meaning of all of this is you can if you read between the lines you know that at times to teach someone a lesson for example our own children when we teach a lesson we show something or we be a bit you can say a bit rough so maybe you get angry or so or a small slap you give the child and so on it doesn't mean that you are doing violence there oh i want to kill my child so i am beating him do we do that no but at that instance that was necessary to teach the child same thing here vishnu also does so we should not make a conclusion that okay vishnu is also proud about himself no to teach the person a lesson teach garuda a small lesson and to remove his pride vishnu had told this so purushottama so by chanting this name phalashruti is success at every step whatever we do to be attain success that is the phalashruti of chanting this name purushottama yena i think what is the thing with it madam yes Uh, uh, thank you great for all these uh, explanations. But then I have a point out because mm. in somewhere in literature, the pu stands dear or something somewhere. So can you explain that purusha and purusha? Purusha, ah, purusha. Ah, yeah. There, that is with regards to purusha. That means it relates to man. It is the best among man. Purusha, that is there, that relates to the Lord. There, for example, it has got reference on the purusha sutta. meaning the one who is yeah, yeah. ultimate yeah. that is purush yeah. purushaha that is different yeah. here it is purushaha mankind so that is only difference that is there. that has got the second pu that you are saying has not got much reference here purushottam heart is the uh, rasva okay yeah. no i am not clear pu pu so, the second dirgha pu dirgha o stands for the lord or ultimate purusha purusha that is ultimate lord sahasra shirsha purusha sahasra akshas sahasra pad it relates to the purusha sukta the lord having thousand heads thousand hands it has got nothing to do with purusha mankind whereas this okay. purushottamaha tries to show the different levels of mankind how you can attain i told you purusha purushot purushottara purushottara purushottam from a normal man till the lord how are the different stages or the best among men is lord that is what has been shown here there is a purushaha that you are talking about that is only the lord there is no reference of man at all the one who is ultimate that is purushaha 
it oh, not that dirga pu is has got reference in the vedas not in literary like stotra literature okay okay next to move about so i and i i don't think if i told you for keshava 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 yanamaha the phalashruti is <coughs> to remove us from all dangers right just as the lord removed the priest who done who did who stole the jewels similarly to remove from all dangers okay yogo 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 yoga vidam neta pradhan purusheshwar ha narasimha vapushriman keshava purushottama ha finish verse number 3 yes one second i put on the other that last you said no keshava nama palasruti you said to save devotees from all dangers okay, okay. next verse number 4 प्रभवाचक्षते what is this it is the gita bhashya written by vyasa himself if you see the bhagavad vyasa vachanat sarva or as told by vyasa not exactly you can say the bhagavad gita but these are in the lines of vyasa or vyasa's explanation of what he has told about sarva what is the meaning of sarva means so the literal meaning is he is everything one who tells that he is everything that is sarva now there is a story behind this what is sarvaha meaning the lord is everything or lord is in everything for this there is a story now we have heard about different instances of radha kalyanam sita kalyanam meaning the marriage of sita marriage of radha uh, parvati kalyanam marriage of the goddess and so on so like this or even if you go to tirupati you have the kalyan utsava right so there we have shrinivasa kalyana that is the lord balaji's wedding so in many places we celebrate the wedding of the lord right which is celebrated as a festival so usually you know when we look at all kalyanam is marriage we say radha kalyanam sita kalyanam or even parvati kalyanam valli kalyanam and so on but only in the case of shrinivasa so usually the lady the goddess is associated with the name like for example sita radha and so on then why only with regards to shrinivasa we don't say shrinivasa and padmavati we don't say padmavati kalyana we say shrinivasa kalyana why so that is because there is a story behind it the legend goes about that so usually whenever there is a wedding of course today's times have changed but usually or oh, even today also if you see lot of contribution or you can say lot of things have to be given from the girl's side of the family right so or even for the girl herself also a lot of spending has to be done maybe in clothes jewels and so on so usually the most contribution is done by the girl side that is why just to give that respect the girl or the lady is associated with the name so therefore sita kalyanam radha kalyanam and so on a lot of contribution was done by the female side and therefore they have been associated with that name but only in the case of shrinivasa we know that if you know the background story of shrinivasa and the lord of tirupati you know that shrinivasa had to take loan from lord of wealth that is lord kubera to do his marriage that is why today also if you go to tirupati why tirupati is one of the richest temples of india or why do people offer a lot of gold money and so on or even all the people who are there the archakas the priests why do they wear a lot of gold or why it is very very auspicious to give gold money and so on to tirupati it is because we are helping the lord give back his loan to kubera the lord has taken a lot of loan from kubera for his own wedding so to give to help the lord to give all the loan back people donate their in money this is what the legend goes about so during the shrinivasa kalyanam shrinivasa lord is all alone to do his marriage there is no one with the lord he has to take care of all the arrangements so what he does is he calls agni deva he tells agni deva you are the one who is responsible for the cooking part 
for wedding so from that time onwards wedding means food this has been started with shrinivasa so on the lighter note if you take also out of 100 people who are there 95 people or even all of us also why do we go to a wedding you think very practically someone invites us for the wedding how many of us are actually interested in the wedding right it may be a friends relatives of course we are very happy it's a no no it's my cousin's wedding i'm so happy and so on ultimately we just go to enjoy right enjoy that too of course today's times you have a lot of things to enjoy maybe they dance about and this and that that is one thing but apart from that the only other enjoyment is food but okay today i don't have to cook today i'll get nice something nice to eat everyone is happy right so ultimately everyone all of us if there is a wedding 90 percent we are happy that okay we are going to get some nice food 10 percent of course there is a wedding i am happy for you and so on so that is just like dialogues that we make ultimately we all go to enjoy the food that is it so wedding means food this has been started by shrinivasa so shrinivasa tells that no everyone is coming i have invited all the all the gods from heaven all rishis and so on everyone is going to come for my wedding so i need a good cook because wedding means cook so even now also if you see if the food is not good anywhere not only in a wedding we will never go to that no food is never good always people comment on the food that is given to us right wedding let it be however it is i'm not interested food should be good or be it some other puja even a small function at your house we have a few people coming in the food is, should always be good right so shrinivas also focused on this saying that food should be good so he calls agni bhagwan itself and says that you are the basis of food without you i cannot cook anything so you only become my cook and ensure that you cook everything nicely because all the sages calls all my relatives everyone is coming so food should be good agni bhagwan agrees so in big big vessels all the cooking everything has been done so now what happens is that the lord what he does now if you see tirupati it's on a hilly area right and then on the narayana pura those who are well versed with tirupati you know you have the goddesses padmavati's uh, temple also so from that from the lord's place till to meet the goddess he has to come so there is a distance he has to travel so the lord says let me eat everything let me eat a bit so that i can i'll be fresh or i'll be uh, healthy because the wedding will take a lot of time so i need food otherwise i'll feel hungry so he decides and in the first batch itself the lord it's himself eats now you imagine it's your wedding and you're sitting in the first batch and you're having food or something at your house we don't sit in the first batch we don't sit first and we have the food okay that's everyone you can see for yourselves i have eaten my food we don't do that right you see the people who have come they have eaten properly but here the lord did not do that why did he do so now now his lord is being very practical here all the sages everyone has come they are shocked to see the lord eating so what is this we have come for your wedding you didn't even see that whether we have eaten nothing your guests have been honored you are sitting in the first batch and eating this is as if it's an insult to us we are going to teach you a proper lesson so then the lord says that no it is not at all uh, so because i have to travel i have to go and meet padmavati that is the reason i ate and secondly i wanted to taste also so if everything is good all the guests also will be happy that is the reason why i ate but still now the sages did not agree to all this saying that this is not a reason that you can give for tasting you could have eaten little you were sitting nicely and eating this is not done so now this is what they said and they were just standing about so at that time after some time they felt that their stomachs are full everything is full they don't feel like eating so now uh, everyone is shocked like we didn't eat anything but still we are feeling full what happened then they enjoy the wedding and so on wedding everything gets over and then they go about so at that time the lord is there and then all the agni bhagwan comes there agni bhagwan even padmavati the goddess she also comes and she asks what is this nobody ate food but still everything is everyone says that they are full they have eaten their stomachs are full what is this we didn't understand lord your says that i am sarvaha i am in everyone everyone is in me so if i ate it is as if all the entire world has been has eaten practically this is not so we also in our everyday life you see we put uh, we speak right if you eat it's as if i have eaten for saying this is fine really does it happen for the case of hearing it wow look at him look at his love towards me that's what we feel very happy but ultimately we are all human beings we have to fill our own stomachs it doesn't happen you eat my stomach is full in our case it doesn't happen because we are not sarvaha but the lord is sarvaha so still padmavati does not agree she says no i did. she says no i don't agree to this elaborate nicely 
for this the lord gives an explanation he says now there are different parts of the body legs hands feet stomach eyes nose everything but for the whole body what sustains us is food right now we don't offer food to every part of the body my leg has to be strong so i give food to my leg hand has to be strong i give food to my hand eyes have to be strong i give food to my eyes we don't do that only the mouth we eat only through the mouth mouth ensures that food reaches everywhere and all my body is strong right <coughs> sorry so similarly if i am the only one being who's there at the center so if i eat it's i'm equal to the mouth if i eat all my other body parts that is compared to all other human beings entire living creature not only human beings entire living creation will be strong so if i eat the entire living creation will be strong just as we eat through our mouth the whole body is strong so this is of course this is a story that is there just to elaborate on the name of sarvaha sarvaha meaning god is within us we are within god everywhere whatever is there all around is sarvaha the nama here to be chanted is sarvaya namaha when this nama is chanted everything around seems to be good or whatever happens in life will always be good secondly now here there will be a question how can you say everything will be good bad things also do come right however a person might be good even for god himself he had to face so many troubles how can you say that everything will be good at least our outlook of looking towards things will change into positivity rather than sitting and complaining about everything oh this has happened oh that has happened our outlook towards life will change everything will seem to be good and the level of problems that we have will surely reduce so the meaning is or whenever not only in this context in general also whenever you come across this that everything will be good doesn't mean that from tomorrow till i die there will be no problems there will be no dukha this human beings we are life is full of both good and bad things but our outlook of looking at things will surely change that is the meaning of this nama sarvaya namaha did everyone understand yes okay yes 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 then there is an incident in mahabharata also no hmm when duryodhan purposefully sent durvasara to see ah yes correct correct same same that's when the small tulsi leaf is there and she it's correct so that is the same incident that he is sharing draupadi yes, yes. all the pandavas they come in and only one one rice grain was in the yes correct so that's when the lord uh, helps yeah, yeah, yeah. durvasa and all the sages right. feel that everything they have eaten through their stomachs correct next sarva sharva sarvaha sar now here while chanting also everyone has to be very 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 careful many people knows who are chanting the vishnu sahasranama sarva sharva both these words are different we don't realize that many people you interchange it you chant it however you want it is not so so therefore i'm saying make a note of it first is sarvaha this is sharva s h Now what is this Sharvaha? Sharvaha is actually another name for Lord Shiva. So one who destroys, that is, at the time of pralaya or dissolution, one who is known for destruction is Lord Shiva, right? So Sharva and Maha we have for Lord Shiva. So how it is related to Lord Vishnu? It is another name for Lord Vishnu also. How it is that? Now Brahma, it is said that earlier he is to have five faces. He is to have. five faces now we know lord brahma has got four faces representing the four vedas but earlier it is said that there were five faces that brahma had but the fifth face uh, was so powerful it, it was so bright that it used to cause a lot of trouble like people could not even look at the face of brahma so therefore shiva dis- decided that no use of having this fifth face if you are if it is causing a lot of trouble let me cut off this face so shiva does lord shiva he does tandava called a kapali tandava kapali tandava is like a now whenever sati was attacked or you see the problems that came on sati that's when when sati was killed sati died also shiva did a tandava so tandava is done 
in happy occasions also as well as in sad occasions happy occasions is ananda tandava tandava or dance for happiness and kapali tandava or when sati died the tandava that she died it was out of anger or was out of grief so here again it's not anger here but then brahma's face he decided that no let me cut it off so something a bit you can say not exactly wrong but now to cut someone's face is not good right so therefore this tandava that he did and ultimately the tandava dance he did and he cut out the fifth face of brahma now this led to brahma dosha because he had killed killed as actually removed one face of brahma he had done it for the good but still he could not be free from the dosha so he went to lord vishnu he said now what should be done he goes to a temple of lord vishnu tirukkandiyur in tamil nadu again tirukkandiyur there he goes there lord vishnu that there is a temple tank he takes bath there and then he worships the lord now here in this temple only we have the mumurthi mumurthi shiva vishnu and brahma all three lords are there in this temple and the lord here is called hara shapa vimochana lord vishnu has got the name of hara shapa vimochana one who removed the curse of hara that is lord shiva that means the lord shiva lord vishnu said you take bath in this temple and you worship here if you come and worship in this temple all three lords are there shiva vishnu and brahma you can always you will be free from your this curse of brahma dosha of removing the cutting off the fifth face of brahma now it so happened that when he had cut the face of brahma the face got stuck to shiva's hand so it was not falling off from the hand so now he had to cut it off right now while cutting off his hand also could be cut off so he had to be very careful so here lord vishnu comes and it is said that lord vishnu he cut a bit of his a uh, chest part now not exactly full just a small cut he did and with that using that blood what he did is he with smear like how uh, whenever something gets stuck in our hands or so what do we do we apply some oil right we apply some oil or water so it becomes a bit greasy and then you can remove if a ring or something tight ring something is uh, stuck in your hand we do this so similarly vishnu here he put a small cut on his chest and with the blood that oozed out he removed the hand of brahma uh, sorry he removed the head of brahma that was stuck to shiva's hands so why did vishnu have to do this right this was the this is the incident between shiva and brahma they could have taken care of but vishnu said no i am the one who will always be present for those who come and ask me anything so it is not actually a devotee now shiva shiva is said to be a devotee of vishnu vishnu is said to be a devotee of shiva but then here he said that Vishnu reveals that whenever someone is in trouble, meet my devotees. I will always come and save them, even at the cost of my own life, even at the cost of troubling myself. Just now, now cutting a part of our chest and offering is not uh, the blood that oozes out. It would have caused so much pain. But here he did that. So even to the story, what we know is, and then ultimately Shiva's hand comes out. They worship the Lord Trikandi, Tirukandi, and that's how even today. you go to this place in tamil nadu this temple you have the mumurthi mumurthi all the three brahma shiva and vishnu you can go and worship at this temple and this story you can remember there when you go so what is the word you said no tirukandiur tirukandi acha tirukandi k yeah so the name that is sharvaya namaha sharvaya meaning one who removes all kinds of problems is sharvaya so or to go out of the way for saving his devotees So all of us also, if we put in some efforts and if we have full faith and devotion on the Lord, the Lord also goes out of His way and will save devotees. Surely He will surely come to all of us help. So little efforts from our side, if we put in ten, the Lord will put in hundred. That's what is shown. So the fourth nama that we saw today is Sharva Ya Namaha Shar. Phalashruti, all our problems also will be solved. Next nama. Shivaha. Shivaha's purity. Shivam, Shubham. We have Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. Meaning purity. Everything is just pure there. Shiva. Oh, Shivaha, Lord Shiva. Why it is another name of Lord Vishnu then? For this, there is a story. What is that? Once it so happened that Parvati was doing a lot of tapas because she wanted to marry Shiva. She was doing a lot of tapas. So then. Uh, Shiva himself he wanted to test Parvati. He says, "Okay, this lady says I want to marry you, but then let me go and test her a bit." 
so then he just goes in the form of a, uh, a person who roams about in a forest also so you can say like a tribal man so shiva disguises himself as a tribal man he goes near parvati and says uh, that old lady why do you want to why are you in the forest what are you doing she says no i am doing penance i want to attain shiva i want to marry him therefore i am praying to him the shiva in the form of a tribal man he says that why do you want to marry shiva there are so many other gods around so many good people around so many good kings on earth that shiva you see he does not even wear proper clothes just wears a elephant skin about around him he has jata he is a smashana vasi he lives in a smashana he uses a bhasma that is there through the ashes this scene you can see when you go to which temple anyone knows where the bhasma is offered to the lord no mahakaleshwar 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 no not kashi kashi is where we do the kashi. final rites this is in mahakaleshwar mahakaleshwar madhya pradesh only temple that faces which direction okay so it has become a quiz class but still you can share south, south. south facing only so, linga shivalinga which faces south rest everything in a east west direction that's why when at our houses also whenever we keep idols and puja room should always be east west facing not south why so why in the south or even when we sleep also we should not keep our head towards the south direction reason being when a person dies head is kept towards the south that is the reason why it is said so do not keep the do not sleep keeping your head on the south this is one thing philosophically but there is a scientific meaning also to this saying that when we keep our head towards the south direction all the energy of our body is pulled away because we have both the poles north pole and south pole that is why where there is a lot of energy south or the north ma'am south south north we should not north south i am talking about the head that you mean, not the leg head so no, head it's only it's like that ganapati story what we have heard is he was facing towards the north and so his head got cut that, that is what the he was facing towards the north so his leg was towards the north right no no head was, was towards acha acha okay head was towards the north head was towards the north the leg correct 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 so now see so, if you see in the north south direction maybe as you say also that might also be correct maybe yeah that can also be there you cannot you should not keep the head towards the north correct correct leg should not be towards the south right right So we should not face towards the south. That is what I meant. Ah. So head should be towards not to the north. Correct. I'm sorry. Head should not be towards, towards the, the north. north. The Leg should, should be on the south. Correct. So that is the reason why they don't sleep uh, sleep towards. So practically also, basically north south north this direction, nobody should sleep much sleep or maybe you don't do a lot of puja things and you don't keep your images. Uh, this is one reason, and why with regards to the sleep, why it is told so because when a person dies, we do that. It faces the south. That's why the Shivalinga there in Mahakaleshwara it is facing towards the south. Dakshina Mukhi Shivalinga. I think recently you had a lot of development on the Shivalinga, right? So they have renovated it and everything. So that is because in the morning when we have the Bhasma Arti, people who have gone there, you would have visited, you would have also done the Bhasma Arti. there the bhasma that is used now the bhasma or the vibhuti that we apply at our houses it is not from dead bodies right we it is properly that is used for puja but only there during the bhasma arti time what they do is every day they need to find a chita every day for the bhasma arti purpose they have to find this chita which has been burnt the previous day only when we burn the ashes the previous day next day we will find the ashes right it takes one day and the bones and the ashes are there that's why we have dasti visarjanam done next day so that ashes the fresh ashes that are there it is mixed along with the bhasma that is already there along with the vibhuti that is there of the lord during the bhasma arti time it is done and the lord is offered the bhasma arti so this is the significance and i have not gone to this place i have not experienced but it is said that we feel very uh, i'm not saying uh, like a bit disturbed because these are not things which we do it like you go to the smashana bhumi and you take out vibhuti and put it so of course we don't have to go but the priest and whoever is there they do that and it is said that not till date like someone had question saying that what if one day you don't find a dead body right 
It's not that every day now from where will I get Bhasma? For that every day a person should die. They said that in all these years, surely they find dead bodies. Not one, there will be many. There are so many people who are born, so many people also die. So at this time, why I told you it's a bit disturbing. Disturbing or when we actually go and witness, even if you Kashi and all, if you go from a, would have seen pictures and all, how we see the chitta burning. At that time, you know the importance of life, right? When you go there, nothing. In one minute, person, all my years I've saved so much, I did this, we are also proud of that. When a person dies, nothing remains, just bones, right? When we die above. So it's just the end that we can experience. So sometimes some people do find this a bit disturbing, but that is the traditionally what they follow here. Huh. So coming back to the story, let's not get <laughs> deviated to Mahagaleshwara. So here what uh, Shiva, that who comes in the form of a tribal man, he comes and tells that I am, uh, not I am, he does not say that. He says Shiva is such a person living in the Smashana. He uses all such things which usually nobody will do, go to the Smashana, pick up Bhasma and so on. He dances with his Bhutaganas. They are not even normal human beings whom we can look at. Do you want to set, do you want to marry such a man? Parvati says, let him be however he is. I, I don't go by his outer looks, I go, I go by his qualities. Shiva is impressed by her answer. He reveals, but still saying that I am only Shiva, I just came to test you. And finally both of them, they get married. Shiva and Maha. So this name, it signifies the marriage, the wedding ceremony of Shiva and Parvati. So all that marriage, everything is done. Both are living happily together in Kailasa. Now one day Parvati questions Shiva. Now Parvati is known for questioning everywhere. That's why in the Phalashruti of the Vishnu Sasarnama also we have Enova Enavaguna Vishnor Nama Sahasrakam Pathyade Pandita Yadutyam Shodham Icham Yaham Prabhu. We'll look at that later. So here Parvati asks that in the Vishnu Sasarnama I see that one of your names is Shivaha. You are only called Shivaha, right? And Shiva literally means auspiciousness. You only had come and told me there is nothing auspicious in you. Or literally, practically also, if you see what is auspicious in Shiva, nothing. Chitta of Bhasma is put in. Or he looks also not a very very beautiful or handsome form. Just a deer skin, uh, elephant skin, Gajavastradhari, with a Trishula, Bhutagana. What is auspicious in you? Why are you even called Shiva? Shiva gives an answer to Parvati saying that, I am not called Shiva because of my looks. But I am the person, there is another name for Lord Vishnu, which is called Shiva. And I am always contemplating on that name. I am always sitting and doing meditation on the name Shiva, Yamaha, Shiva. Shiva, Vishnu is all auspiciousness, all Mangala. You look at Lord Vishnu, everything is happy. Just look at the picture, he will be well decked from up to down. Everything is nice. That is Shivam, Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. Everything is nice and beautiful there. I am always meditating on this form of Vishnu who is called Shiva. Therefore, I have also got this name as Shiva. That's what this is a very, very beautiful explanation that Shiva gives to Parvati. Again, showing the unity between Shaivism and Vaishnavism. That is why, and even Vishnu also. In the Ramavatara, you get this significance. Rama says, I am always worshipping you, O Shiva. Shiva says, I am always worshipping you, O Rama. Greatest devotee of Shiva, Rama. Greatest devotee of Rama, Shiva or Vishnu. This reference we get in the Kurma Purana. If you want to make a note of it, Kurma Purana. Get this reference. Shiva is the greatest devotee of Vishnu. Vishnu is the greatest devotee of Shiva. And we people are fighting between Shaivism and Vaishnavism. Both the devotees up there, both the gods up there, they are worshipping and chanting each other's names. But we have problem. He is a Shiva devotee, I am a Vishnu devotee. I will not talk to you, you should not talk to me. Problem starts with us, not with them. The reason because we don't know our own scriptures. We have not read the Kurma Purana. We have not read the Vishnu Sasarnama. We don't know the significance behind everything. We have a problem. No, he is a Vishnu devotee. I am a Shiva devotee. How can we be? We show, we are, we are fighting amongst ourselves. Then we are not fit to even worship God. Gods themselves are worshipping each other. Again, you can take the meaning for this Rameshwara. So many times I told you. Ramaha Yasya Ishwaraha Rameshwara. Shiva gives this definition, Rameshwara Shivalinga, Ramaha Yasya Ishwara, one whose Lord is Rama, that is Rameshwara. So Shiva says, for me you are my Lord, therefore I am named as Rameshwara in this temple. Rama did not like this. Rama said, no, my definition is not this way. Rama said, Ramasya Ishwara, Rameshwara, Lord of Rama is Rameshwara. So like this, both the gods actually, they had a small argument saying that, no, I am your devotee, you are my devotee and so on. And we are having problems. So the 
point the contain is this name shiva actually shows the unity between shaivism and vaishnavism this is one name both the lords vishnu and shiva are named as shiva so when we chant this nama shivaya namaha it just leads to auspiciousness everywhere and the significance of chanting the names of the lord just by chanting his name shiva shiva we say rama rama we say it leads to auspiciousness everything will be happy and prosperous all around so this is the meaning of the name shivaha shivaya namaha